Okay, great. So you may be wondering, who's Jessica? Uh, I'm based in Philadelphia. I run a company called Doc Connector Studio. Um, we've had many iterations. We're currently calling ourselves a creative collaboratory. We work with makers, funders, and technologists to create new forms of media and art and to forge more just, just and joyful futures. But when I began my career in the early 90s, I was actually a science communicator. I worked at the uh, Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. Oh, no. What happened? <laughs> and I um, lost my screen, so I will vamp for a minute. One second. There we go. Um, and I worked at the American Association for the Advancement of Science. So I've been in your shoes. Are you still seeing my presentation and is it advancing? It's advancing. Great. All right. So um, we're here today to talk about inclusion. Uh, what does that mean? It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I happen to live in the United States. So to us, it's largely a conversation around black and white um, and more recently are indigenous people. It, depending on where you live, it might be it might mean different things, might involve different people. Um, but we, whether you're talking about media or science, it's an issue in both fields. So a pretty common way to think about this is this frame of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So diversity means that different people are in the room or at the table. Equity is around addressing historic imbalances to make sure that people have the same access and the same ability to speak and be heard. Um, and then inclusion is actually making those people feel welcome. But this is just one way to think about this. There are other debates that are happening all across the world around pluralism. So not just welcoming or allowing difference, but celebrating it. Liberation, uh, the idea that none of us have to feel like we're excluded or included, but we could just be our full human selves in any given setting without having to fight these tedious battles. <laughs> Um, and then co-production, the relationship between the people who are making the media or doing the science and um, the ones who are receiving it or learning about it or, uh, or being what people call formerly known as the audience. So earlier this year, I, uh, I spoke at a conference um, and I'm not seeing my presenter notes, but I spoke at a conference. They basically had created uh, a co uh, they'd co-produced a scientific paper um, around this transformations conference. And they said narratives to support transformations require transformations in the way that narratives are conceptualized, produced and applied. Uh, that's a pretty fancy way to say that we need new people, new processes and new power relations in order for science communications and any kind of media to be more representative, more welcoming, and actually get the message across. So I've worked on a number of different projects in this arena, and I'm gonna kind of spin you through um, the different ways in which I've been thinking about inclusion. One of them is called Making a New Reality. Um, it's a toolkit for, for inclusive media futures. And in it, we take a look at all kinds of different forms of emerging media and how they tend to lag when it comes to diversity in both the producers and the people who are being represented. So the toolkit looks at ways in which we can do, we can make personal changes around the, the, our assumptions around bias or the ways that we relate to other people professionally and personally, institutional change around hiring, around the ways in which um, editorial decisions are made, and then systemic change, which is across different kinds of institutions. These are large scale policy changes that might make media more inclusive or might provide opportunities like public media where different types of voices can be heard and respected. So what do we mean by emerging media? All kinds of things, uh, augmented reality, olfactory experiments using scent, um, different forms of interactive maps, tactile media. This is important for science communicators because often uh, new forms of media go hand in hand with communicating science. Technology and science are in constant dialogue. So I study a lot of these types of projects um, through Immerse, which I co-founded with the MIT Open Documentary Lab and I'm now the publisher for. This summer I was, uh, I was in Iceland and it really reminded me of a, of a experience that I had at Sundance um, in a virtual reality project. Uh, and this is a, a different way to think about inclusion. How do you make people feel as though 
they're really there, they're part of the scene, they have a personal stake in the issue you're, you're discussing. So this is a picture I took on this beach where these uh, chunks of iceberg were melting. And I didn't think about charts or graphs of the 5 million articles that I've read about, uh, about climate change. What I thought about was this VR experience where they had you strapped in inside of a melting glacier and then took you virtually to the coastline of the Eastern United States to see the sea, sea level rising. So these kind of embodied, you know, sort of immersive experiences are, are a way to communicate science concepts that, that will stick with people and that they'll remember and that they will be able to recall. Here's just another quick example also at Sundance. Um, this collaborative called Marshmallow Laser Feast <laughs> had, a, had you inside of the VR experience where you were walking around a kind of a squishy thing that turned out to be a giant gullet. And it was, a, it was an animated, um, virtual environment where basically it was a planet where people just eat everything in sight. And eventually, and they gave you things to taste while you were doing it. So eventually they are so greedy, they suck down the entire planet and, and it goes dark. So this idea of sort of experiential media that taps into as many senses as possible is just, I find it fascinating and it's worth exploring. Another thing that I've been uh, uh, experimenting with, and especially during the pandemic is um, using fictional narratives to explore complex scientific and technological concepts and to think about the ramifications. So I've been working with this membership organization called the Guild of Future Architects. Uh, and we've, we've done a few different projects. Um, one of them was we looked 20 decades, uh, like 10 decades into the past and 10 decades into the future and wrote a fictional piece about each decade and the speculative imaginations of a, of a group. Um, those types of processes were then poured into this other report. It's called Portals to Beautiful Futures, which we did for the Omidyar Network. Um, that was basically four fictional narratives, each of which had an artifact and a range of possible outcomes and a provocation. So the provocation that is sort of tied into this environmental theme that I'm moving along uh, was, are we ready to move from an era that rewards extraction to one that prioritizes regeneration? And the story itself was basically set in a, in a future community where those were the principles. Finally, uh, a way to think about inclusion is to actually bring people into the scientific process. So this is a project that I helped to incubate back in 2012 that has really evolved in a number of different ways. It's a citizen science project. It's right now it's an app where people basically record climate changes they're seeing in their backyards. And these are then matched with big data predictions of flooding or heat islands um, and then used as a kind of a cross checker. And, and they've actually, um, the data collected by all these citizen scientists in, in New Orleans and in New Jersey and other places um, has actually been used to move money into flood remediation or to contradict NOAA's predictions. So this is a way in which communication is two way, not just one way. So, Part of the, what I've learned over this last 25 years of doing this kind of work is that there's never any uh, one silver bullet. There's no way to say like, this is what works. This is what's going to you know, really get through to people. They're gonna be able to grasp it and understand it. You have to just keep experimenting. So in order to do that, I mean, in a scientific mode, <laughs> uh, we created this strategy deck for producers, artists, and funders called the Impact Pack. You can use it in a lot of different ways. You can prototype campaigns or media projects. You can sort of use it for evaluation to tell your story. You can weigh different options with your colleagues or your funders. You can take it to your audience and elicit feedback with it. You can use it in the classroom. In conjunction with releasing the uh, Making a New Reality Toolkit, we created this unintended outcome suit. This is a result of the last four years of really understanding problems with misinformation manipulation and the negative effects of social media and other media. So we added this into the deck so that people can not just have a positive story about the, how their campaign or project is gonna you know, change the world or change people's minds, but to really understand that they might be doing harm as well at the same time. So I'm gonna present it to you. And I also made this link available, um, which I can't see the chat because I'm in full screen, but um, I will switch to the Moreau board and you all can also go and see it for yourself. 
So there we go. Muro might ask you to sign in. If it does, I apologize. It's a little bit finicky. How am I doing on time? You're good, Jessica. Okay, great. So the impact pack, uh, you can, in Moreau, you can use the map on the lower right-hand side of the screen to um, navigate, or you could click into the whiteboard part of the screen and move it around. You can scroll um, to zoom in, or you can use these little plus and minus signs if scrolling is a little nauseating. Um, uh, yes? Jessica, should people open this up in their own browsers to get the best use of this and while you chat, or should they just watch you on the screen? I'm going to do a quick demo, but okay. if you want to start, people can open it up on their own browsers if they want to start playing around with it immediately, but I'm just going to, then okay. we want to watch my Okay, so we want to watch it. you. Okay, I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah. Okay, good. So basically, this is a theory of change builder that allows you to think about what you're making, uh, who you're making it for, and if, if 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 these cards don't represent what your plan is, you can always add something. There's a little sticky note generator here. Um, how you're engaging them. This is really the core of the deck. Is this, these engagement models, and the instructions for the engagement models are here below. So you might be, for, for example. Um, doing a local campaign or a local talking about regional science issues. You might uh, be sort of going for sort of a red car carpet model that would allow you to unveil a project and, and get a ton of media attention. Um, you might wanna convey a concept and have people understand that concept like a Malcolm Gladwell kind of approach. So this is all on the left-hand side of the equal sign, what you're making. And then we have the outcomes, uh, intended and unintended. <laughs> Where's my unintended outcomes? Oh. <laughs> okay, this is an older model, but it'll give you the idea. So basically as a result of whatever it is that you're creating, you might want people to adopt the same approach as you, or you might want to have them change their behavior because there's a new discovery around health. Or you might want to, in the in the vein of this um, presentation, you might want to increase equity, equity of access, equity of understanding, et cetera. Uh, the, the board also allows you to think about how you might pay for your project if you're doing that kind of thing. And then it gives you the tools to have a conversation with somebody else who can say, oh, well, I think you should add, for example, the trendsetters, and then they'll really, um, They'll really like get the word out. So this is a fun, this board is basically open to all of you to play with. We have a couple of other suits that aren't on here. I can go in and add them afterwards. Um, I think this is sort of my starter, my starter model, but I'll stop there.